Welcome to Topper Talk, your number one Western Kentucky Athletics podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Moffitt, and I'm joined by co-host Tyler Bailey. Hilltopper Nation, whether it's happening on the hill or on the road, grab those red towels, stand up and cheer, because it's up next on Topper Talk. Welcome back, and thank you for downloading and listening to another episode of Topper Talk Podcast. As always, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Topper underscore talk. And head over to our YouTube channel at Topper Talk Podcast. You know, check out all our video episodes when they drop. Uh, subscribe over there. You know, get an, a notification every time we drop a new episode. Share those links. Tell a friend. Tell a Hilltopper uh, in your life. You know, we're all kind of one big family. You know, us Hilltopper Nation friends. So share those links. Tell people. You know, we're trying to spread the word to as many uh, people in Hilltopper Nation that so as possible. Um, as always, we've got Tyler here with me, man. We've got a, a, a fun, big football game to recap. You ready to jump in? Yeah, man, I am. Let's do this. Let's chop it up. Now, this podcast is sponsored by the Fireman Moving Company. Uh, the Fireman Moving Company is the official moving company of WKU Athletics. Not only can they be trusted to move all the coaches in and out of Western, but they can move you anywhere nationwide. The Fireman Moving Company is owned and operated by Firemen and is founded by WKU alumni. If you are looking to move anytime soon, give them a call at 270-791-1755 and get yourself a free quote. I mean, they, they're they the moving experts. You know, they move all of our uh, WK equipment to all of our away games. Um, if you have, a, you know, if you're moving a new house, um, something for a job, just a storage unit, whatever you're doing, big, small, near, far, I say it every time, call them, get a free quote and... See if they can help you out, because I think it's going to be worth your time. It's going to be worth your money uh, to let the pros do it. Now, before we jump into the main segment of the episode, we're going to get caught up with our Red Tail Wrap-Up, which catches us up on any athletics we've missed since we last recorded. So, Tyler, give us that Red Tail Wrap-Up. What have we missed? All right. So, on 11-24 women's basketball, they lost 61-77 to number 16, Kansas State. Men's basketball, meanwhile, traveled – up north uh, to the Northern Classic where they played Bowling Green. They won that game, 72-65. Uh, also on 25th, women's basketball won uh, 62-50 versus Vermont. Uh, and then men's basketball went on that two-game losing streak where they lost 77-85 versus Canisius. And then they lost 67-77 to versus UNC Asheville today. Um, you know, that game actually – the Northern Classic, I felt good uh, after Friday's game. You know, we beat Bowling Green. We didn't shoot all too well, but uh, mm, the uh, losing to Canisius and uh, UNC Asheville uh, wasn't good. What was your thoughts on it? You know, it, it, we seem very inconsistent. You know, we seem like, you know, it kind of reminds me of the football team. We, we you know, we'll have some good first halves. You know, the games that we lost, we had leads at halftime. Um, and then we just came out, and whether we just didn't make adjustments or we got outplayed because they made better adjustments, we just gave up the lead, uh, didn't keep the defensive intensity and pressure up that we're kind of known for at this, you know, short sample of the season. Um, and right now, just there hasn't been enough consistent shooting, I guess would be the nicest way to put it, you know, not to call anyone out, but – um, you know, shots aren't falling, um, but I still stand by, you know, granted, I hate losing those games. I think we should have won all three of them, uh, but I still stand by that. I think our defense will keep us in most every game that we play, but we're going to have to make some shots to win. Um, and that just didn't happen in the Northern Classic. Um, but, you know, that's just stuff we've got to learn from, uh, work on and get better at. You know, we we've We've got to keep that same intensity, that same pressure that got us the lead going into halftime and then come out of halftime and, you know, the score's got to be 0-0 zero, zero again. You know, we can't coast to the finish line. We've got to be intense uh, on the defensive end and hopefully turn defense into offense and get some easy baskets um, just because our half-court offense and the three especially this year just hasn't been there when we've needed to be there. So disappointing tournament um, and obviously – you know, room to grow there, but I think we'll get better as the season goes. Yeah, I agree with you. The uh, the speaking on three point shooting, I know I think it was versus Kinesius. We shot two of ten 
from three point land and we shot like 13 of 22 from free throws. Um, and then I think against UNC Asheville was actually our best field goal percentage shooting. Uh, we shot like 50%, I think it was 27 of 54. Three point just wasn't really, I think it was in 20 or 30 percentile or 20, 30 percent. And uh, free throws was like 91.9. <clears throat> I looked up earlier tonight. Um, but I think it was against Kinesius. We had four steals versus like 19 turnovers. That right there is going to kill you regardless of who you're playing. Um, but moving on. Uh, women's basketball, they lost 77 to 90 versus Purdue Fort Wayne. Uh, and today, WKU Volleyball, uh, I think it was today, uh, is is listed as a six seed and opens versus Coastal Carolina on Friday in in Knoxville in the NCAA tournament. If they win, they'll face the winner of University of Tennessee and High Point. So let's discuss Kentucky or WKU volleyball. Yeah, it's pretty awesome that they got a six seed. Um, another great season, you know, undefeated in conference play. You know, since 2018, haven't lost a conference game. So, you know, they did what we expected them to do. They won a conference championship, regular season and tournament. Um, they had the number 20 RPI in the nation, and they were ranked number 21 in the final AVCA uh, coaches poll. So kind of figured they'd land around that five or six seed, um, which they did. They ended up landing the six seed in Knoxville. Um if they are able to beat Coastal Carolina, you know, a Sunbelt team in the first round, hopefully, you know, they'll be playing Tennessee, the host, which will be a tough environment there in Knoxville. Um, and Tennessee is a three seed. So they're obviously going to be a pretty good matchup. SEC school um, should be a fun matchup. But, you know, I'm ready to see them win. I think we're capable of winning. You know, Travis Hudson's, you know, deaf taxes and in, in conference championships, some NCAA rings. So, you know, love to see him make the appearance. You know, this team um, just worked their butts off all year. They've earned, you know, the seating that they're at and everything that they get here going forward uh, in the NCAA tournament will be earned because it's going to be a tough road. Um, you know, got to take it one game at a time. Let's beat Coastal first. And then, you know, let's, uh, you know, let's upset Tennessee and, and knock off Rocky Top. Hey, I agree. I mean, with all the accolades and awards that these girls have gotten all season, uh, you know, whether player of the week, setter of the of the year, I think freshman of the year, um, it'd be awesome to go in there, upset uh, University of Tennessee and turn the Rocky Top red, kind of like whenever we beat Kentucky and the bluegrass turned red for that night. Uh, but that is it for the Red Tail Wrap-Up. Moff, back to you. Yeah, now jumping into the, the main part of the segment, we want to recap the WKU football game. Uh, versus FIU just this past Saturday afternoon. It is Sunday night as we're recording. So yesterday, um, you know, WKU went down to Miami. Uh, we secured a season-ending victory. Uh, we moved to 7-5 and five as our final regular season record on the year. We won that ball game 41-28. to 28. So a pretty convincing victory. You know, never felt in doubt as I was watching. Uh, there was an announced crowd of 12,724 in attendance to watch this game. Um, yeah, they must have been dressed as bleachers because there were not 12,000 of anything in that stadium. But that's what they announced. You know, it looked about like 47 people were there as they panned the crowd several times. Um, but it was nice that we were able to go down there uh, for their senior night, you know, similar to how we did FAU last year. Um, and ruined their senior night festivities. Uh, we dropped them to four and eight on the year. Now, Tyler, how did this game look to you? You know, just watch it as a whole. You know, how do you feel about this game? I agree with you. I felt like it was never in doubt. Um, you know, it's always good whenever a wide receiver can throw a touchdown pass. Um, and then when the whole fourth quarter is basically second string and, you know, kind of garbage time, mop-up time, um, this game played out like i expected it to uh i know during the uh the the the, the, the our last episode we gave our uh, score predictions we were both wrong or i know i was wrong but uh but no i i felt like this was exactly how it was going to play out yeah you know we i think we both acknowledged that fiu was improving this year from what they were last year at 73 and zero 
Um, they had transitioned quarterbacks to a new starter this year after like game two or three. Um, but even still, a down FIU that's rebuilding is still doesn't have the the horses or the guns to compete with us, even in a down year. An average year for us, you know, six, six, seven, five. Um, you know, we still won that game pretty comfortably. Now, offensively, uh, we were led by quarterback Austin Reed. It was nice to see him kind of shake off his senior night rust. Uh, he finished the game 26 out of 35 for 280 passing yards and four touchdowns with zero interceptions. And that was in three quarters of work, like you alluded to. We did have a lot of uh, garbage time. A lot of reserves got to play. Uh, Marquis Step was our leading rusher. He had seven carries for 32 yards. Uh, Malachi Corley was our leading receiver. He finished with six catches for 52 yards and one touchdown. Uh, he also passed Taewon Taylor to become the all-time receptions leader in WKU history, and he did that in just three seasons. Uh, he now sits at 255 receptions, which is two ahead of Taewon Taylor, uh, and he's still got the bowl game. Uh, that, you know, all indications are he plans on playing in that before, you know, declaring for the NFL draft. So he's still got the bowl game to pad those stats and, uh, you know, hopefully put a little bit more distance there and make it a little harder for whoever, whomever that next GOAT wide receiver is to try to chase him down. But Tyler, overall, you know, how did this uh, WKU offense look to you versus FIU? Well, we didn't really, you know, the rushing game, uh, you know, it's been good the last few weeks this this week. Uh, they only had 74 rushing yards, and they had 30 yards in the first half of rushing. Um, you know, I, I I was kind of hoping for more, uh, but really our pass game pass game got us to where we needed to be. Uh, Craig Burt, he had two catches, 42 yards, one touchdown. Jimmy Holiday had two catches, 45 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, Davion Irvin Point Dexter, five carries for 18 yards. Caden Veltkamp, he got in on, on the fourth quarter. Uh, he had four carries, 23 yards, and Turner Helton, uh, he is still a hundred percent passing on the on the year, I believe, unless he fudged one. No, he whenever he got in the first early in the season, I don't think he missed pass. So, um, Turner Helton got in, did some good things. They spread the ball around. That twelve receivers uh, caught the ball. So, I mean, it was a good offensive showing uh, the entire game, I believe. Yeah, it was nice to see us start fast. Um, I missed the very starting of the game. I was leaving work and trying to get over to a, a friend's house to watch the game. But keeping up with it on Twitter, you know, I just saw, you know, quick touchdown, quick touchdown. I was like, all right, let's go. You know, it was nice to see us getting off to a fast start and taking a 34-7 lead to halftime. Um, you know, granted, we only scored seven points in the second half. But, you know, we, we pulled a lot of starters. We played a lot of reserves, got them some, you know, hopefully valuable snaps and game time for, future consideration for their careers um you know obviously hopefully still here at western um but also just protecting the health of of our starters and the guys that have future ambitions maybe of going pro or uh playing in the bowl game just whatever they may be having going on just protecting those guys getting the starters out letting some of the younger guys play nothing wrong with that uh, now defensively wk was led by nico cooper and kylan goodry they both had five tackles each. Uh, Kendrick Simpkins also had a forced fumble that Upton Stout uh, recovered. He had a little scoop and score, ran that back for a touchdown. And then both Talik Allen and Alex Ford had interceptions of this game. Um, and like we've mentioned a couple of times, a lot of the second half, um, you know, coming out of halftime, we saw reserves, linebackers, secondary. Um, then as we got into the fourth quarter, we saw on the offensive side of the ball as well. So, a lot of players rotated in now this game. It was real nice to see, and we still were effective in stopping FIU, you know, slowing them down. We weren't they weren't marching up and down the field to where the game was in doubt. So Tyler, how did the WKU defense look to you versus FIU? Oh, well, I thought the defense played like gangbusters, especially in the first half. They held FIU seven points. Uh they held them in the first half to only 114 total yards. And they finished, FIU finished with 301. So I guess in the second half, you know, they pulled some of the starters, letting second string get in there. You saw uh, third quarter and fourth quarter, really, FIU's offense was able to move the ball uh, pretty pretty good. Uh, but, no, I think our defense played outstanding. Nante Davis, he had two solo tackles. He had two total tackles. Um, uh, but, I mean, I – 
I can't complain about this defense. I mean, they, they came in, they held FIU, to, like I said, seven points. But what I was worried about was our second half slump. And we didn't really have one. If anything, it was just a fourth quarter, uh, uh, I guess, let down whenever the reserves got in. So I think the defense played really good this season. I think the, or this game, I think the grade I'm going to give them is going to reflect that later on. Yeah, and we're going to keep on this trend of talking about special teams just because we've had some adversity there, uh, obviously, with Tom Ellard not kicking once again in this game. But I know Corey Munson come in has come in and, and made him proud for these few games that he's kicked. Uh, so Corey Munson had four punts for 173 total yards for a 43.3 yard average, um, including one inside the 20. And then Lucas Canero, uh, he didn't have any field goal attempts, but he was five out of six on extra points with that missed one uh, being a block. So obviously you don't want to see that. Uh, there wasn't really any big return game. You know, we, the last couple of games we've had Easton Messer uh, and Katie Hutchinson had done some things in return game, but nothing notable to, to uh, mention for this game. But Tyler, how did the special teams look for you uh, against FIU? Well, you know, you hate to see a kicker go five or six on extra points. Uh, granted, that extra point didn't cost us anything like it like uh, it would have earlier in the season. So I'm not real mad to him for that. And Corey Munson, you know, I think it's awesome that he is getting better uh, with each game on his punting. You know, the, whenever he was first out there, it was uh, it was pretty – pretty disappointing uh but it seems like he's got his legs underneath him and he's finally finally grown into that position so i'm happy with the way special teams played i think we had uh, no you're right there was no real special return games uh in this game so i'm happy with special teams yeah i think it's it's kind of neat that Corey munza now that he's punting he came in his freshman year he won the bowl game for us on a walk-off field goal if you recall that um and now it looks like his senior year, he's going to get to go out as being maybe he's not maybe he doesn't do anything magical to win the game, but maybe he does. I don't know. You know, it could happen. Um, you know, punting the ball, maybe he flips some field position and puts them in a position where they can't drive. You know, whomever our bowl opponent is uh, can't drive and and win the game. I don't know. I just think it's neat how he's bookended his career. Uh, he's been a real loyal player to the program uh, that's gone through a lot of adversity, and you know was a field goal kicker, place kicker, and he's just been – now he's kickoff specialist, now he's punter. You know, he's done a little bit of everything. He's always a tackling machine on special teams. You know, the months and missile, I like to call him. So, uh, love watching him play. You know, hate that we're getting down to his last game. Um, but excited that he's getting to go out there and just show off his talent uh, because he's been a great player for a long time for Western. Now let's jump into the key indicators in this game before we hit some grades. Um WKU outgained FIU in total yards, 407 to 301. WKU had 21 first downs to only 16 for FIU. WKU was 9 out of 16 on third downs and 2 out of 3 on fourth down. FIU was 8 out of 17 on third down and 2 out of 3 on fourth down. WKU had one turnover. It was a lost fumble. And FIU had three turnovers. And then time of possession, WKU had the ball for 33 minutes and 59 seconds compared to only 26 minutes and one second for FIU. So, you know, basically a clean sweep on the indicators, you know, kind of paints the picture that we controlled this game for the majority of it. You know, we started fast, um, kept the pedal down to halftime, and then after halftime was really more of a, you know, rest some guys, keep some guys healthy, get some young guys in there, and just get this victory um, and get home safely, hopefully. So let's jump into some grades. Tyler, what do you got for the offense versus FIU? So like I said earlier, this was a great showing for the offensive uh, unit. Uh, run game wasn't really there, but we didn't really need it because our pass game was more than s significant for to handle the Panthers. Uh, I'll give the offense an A. Yeah, I'm giving them an A as well. And you mentioned the you know, the wide receiver throwing a touchdown earlier. It was cool to see Dalvin run the play that we ran in the New Orleans Bowl last year. You know, kind of pulled that one out of the closet and dusted it off. And he's got an arm on him, man, and dude was wide open. So uh, nice to see a little trickery, a little creativity uh, that pushed the ball downfield and was successful. Um, so I'm giving the offense an A as well. What about the defense versus FIU? Uh, they held FIU to, I think, 14 points uh, until really garbage time whenever they finally got to 28 points. Um, and they did force three 
turnover, so I'll give the defense an A as well. Yeah, I mean, they held them to 301 yards. I think one of their scores was a defensive score, if I'm not mistaken. Would our fumble get returned for a touchdown? Maybe, I think. Um, go ahead. I think it was uh, – yeah, yeah, it, it was a fumble got got returned back for a touchdown. Yeah, no, you know, that was later in the third, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, their offense really didn't do a lot of anything. 301 total yards, that's going to win a lot of ball games. Uh, holding them to 28 points. Again, that's going to win a lot of ball games as long as we're scoring above 30, which is kind of that magic number I've always mentioned. But defense, um, like they have all year, you know, they've been the stronger, strongest unit, most consistent unit, in my opinion. But they definitely earned an A in this game. What about special teams? What you got for them? Well, yeah, it would have been nice to see Canero, Canero uh, stay perfect in this game, uh, go six for six. He didn't. Um, and Munson, his punt game was on point uh, as he's grown into it, so I'll give them an A- minus just because of the missed extra point. Yeah, I'm just going with a flat A. I mean, uh, it, the miss, you know, the block kick, um, you know, I'm not putting that on the kicker, even though it was his stat. You know, it was just uh, not the greatest snap and hold. It got blocked. Not Obviously not good blocking, but um, special teams, you know, I've talked about Corey Munson. I mean, I love the job he's doing. You know, especially after his first kick was like uh, an 18-yard net gain. You know, it was kind of worrisome about what we might be dealing with um, through the end of the season. But he's really uh, stepped up and been a solid replacement uh, while Tom's not been kicking. So I'm giving special teams an A. Uh, What about coaching? All right. So I did, like you said earlier, the the creativity to pull out the the trick play was awesome. Um, I wish they wouldn't have maybe pulled back the defensive dogs, you know, uh, so early because it was about halftime. I went on the bet nap and I saw that Western was plus like 33 and a half point favorites. I put, you know, I selected that and say, let's get some money. I think we're going to uh, score more or at least hold FIU down. In the in the second half, um, and they didn't, so I lost that bet. But I'm not holding that against the coaches. I think they had came in with a good game plan, and they they was able to easily handle FIU. So I'm gonna give them an A as well. But I do wish I would have won that bet. Hey, Vegas always wins. <laughs> that's what I that's what I, I've learned so far. Vegas always wins. Um, coaching, I'm going with an A as well. I mean, we started fast. Um, you know, whatever adjustments we made, we didn't turn the ball over five times like we did senior night. Um, granted, we didn't lean on the run game as much as we we have been the last several weeks, um, but Austin had a really good game passing. The defense was spectacular. Again, 300 yards um, is, is solid against any opponent. So I think the coaching, you know, I think they did a great job, uh, and they earned an A, you know, and that after last week's kind of a brutal – grading that we had for everybody you know, this week was kind of a clean sweep of a so definitely nice uh way to close the regular season uh, now officially over we finished seven and five obviously short of our goals of you know conference championship game appearance at least or, or and and or winning the conference uh we will definitely be going bowling we're still waiting to hear when and where that game will be played who our opponent will be um but, you know, that'll kind of be our what our next episode is going to be. We'll be a, kind of a two-part. We'll do a season recap, and then we'll have a bowl preview, um, kind of breaking down who we're going to be playing, you know, who you need to know and, and look out for. And hopefully we've got a special guest lined up uh, if we can make that happen. So I'm real excited for that. Um, you know, the season's been fun. It's been adverse. You know, it's never – you know, in, in my fanhood of being a WKU fan, it's never just been a simple, great, easy ride and just you win every game you're supposed to win and don't lose any games. You know, it was a tough season for a lot of reasons. And, you know, I mentioned last week, you know, in our last episode, um, just talking to, about the season being disappointing. But I, And I don't mean to sound negative in that aspect, but I think that any fan, player, coach, anyone – related to our program and that is a follower and fan of our team and program athletes, etc. I think they would all kind of say that same thing. We had higher goals and aspirations for this season, but I'm glad we didn't pack it in after the New Mexico state game. 
Um, still able to get a couple of victories. Um, got to watch Malachi Corley break the all-time receptions record. You know, really, really neat to see that video in the locker room after the game uh, where Tyson gave him the game ball, let him say some words, and you could just tell his teammates who were just really excited and proud for him. You know, speech, 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 and then one more year, one more year. We know that's not happening. Um <clears throat> Obviously, that would be awesome if it could or did happen, but Malachi has NFL aspirations uh, and NFL talent, and is definitely going to test his, um, you know, his draft stock, and obviously get drafted and end up in the in, in the NFL somewhere. But this season has been fun, uh, even though it's been a roller coaster ride, and we didn't hit our big goal. Um, you know, we're still going to a bowl game. We're playing in the postseason. Uh, we have a chance to hopefully play somewhere warm, maybe a good location, um, and go win one more ball game for the outgoing seniors. Um, and then obviously jump into the off season with, uh, recruiting and transfers and just, just the craziness that is NIL and the portal these days. Uh, and I'm sure we're going to have some shakeups and we'll talk about that in future episodes as well. And I'm excited to break all that down as it happens. So Tyler, give us your final words and let's get on out of here. Yeah, you're right. You know, the season, the uh, the goals were lofty. Uh, you know, everyone had had you know maybe just one, two loss on the season. Um, it sucks that we we lost as many games as we did. You know, seven and seven and five. Um, but you're right. We're still going bowling. We may not be going fighting for a conference championship, but there's always the next year. Gosh, I feel like Tennessee fans saying that. Next year will be our year. Um, but, you know, that's that's one thing we, we got to look forward to. We are probably going to lose some players in the transport portal. That sucks. But we'll probably, as you like say, the portal giveth and the portal taketh away. Uh, we'll definitely get some some good income and uh, talent. Um, and, I, you know, to, to – I've seen a lot of people on Twitter – uh, especially like the Conference USA, some Conference USA Twitter uh, user, and you know our friend Jeremiah, the the uh, Liberty fan. Uh, seems like uh, Sun Belt is always talking shit about Conference USA and back rent, and forth. Rent free, fuck you mean? <laughs> the fuck you mean? Rent free. But I think, and and uh, our friend, me and Am Jepson was talking about this. Um, if we can maybe do like a Conference USA Sun Belt showcase or showdown, kind of like what the SEC and the Big 12 does, or just, just do something like that too, so we can definitively say this season, this conference is better than this conference or vice versa. Um, you know, Sun Belt, you ain't nothing special, man. I mean, let's, 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 let's just look at it. You got Troy, you got App State. That's about it. Um, but, we do live rent free in their heads, uh, in the conversation, but no, um, you know, I'm hoping basketball season improves, uh, after these last two losses, you know, we have a lot of un- unanswered questions on the offensive side of the ball. I think they'll get it figured out. And I think, um, you know, our goals for that sport is still just wide open and, um, ahead of us. And hopefully you're right. Hopefully we play somewhere warm this uh, this bowl this bowl game, and we get a good opponent. So with that, I will say keep your heads up, Hilltopper fans. There's still a lot to look forward to, and uh, I'll close it with Moff. Who has it better than us? Nobody, as always, buddy. You know, you know. Go tops. Go tops. Later, guys. See y'all.